I'm pretty sure most steaks taste great right off the grill. In fact, I know it. But it seems like skirt steak was made for the job. It's got a flat, wide shape, and that provides plenty of surface area for picking up beautiful char grilled flavor. Now, Lon's here, and she's going to set us up for success and show us the best way to cook the steak. You are so right about skirt steak being fantastic on the grill. Let's get started. Sounds great. I'm working with two pounds of skirt steak here. Now, there's only one thing you really need to know when you're going to the market to pick up your skirt steak. You want to look for the outside skirt steak. It's going to have a shorter grain. This is about three to four inches long, and there's actually another muscle that's also sold as skirt steak, but it's much wider and it's also a little bit tougher. Okay. I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. You don't really need to do too much to this. It comes pretty clean. I'm just taking off any of the silver skin, and I'm actually gonna leave most of this fat on. It's gonna come right off when we grill it. I'm just gonna cut them in half. We're looking for six to eight inch long steaks here. Okay. And then we're gonna make a little marinade. I have half a cup of orange juice here and two tablespoons of lime juice. This particular mojo is Cuban inflected. You'll find mojos across Latin America mm -hmm. and some of the other ones feature vinegars or just uh, lemon juice, just lime juice, but we wanted sour orange here. We also need some garlic, six garlic cloves minced. And then to flavor this, I've got a teaspoon of ground cumin, a teaspoon of dried oregano, and a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes. And now I'm gonna kind of go off book a little bit. I've got two tablespoons of soy sauce here. The soy sauce has glutamates that are gonna make that steak taste especially meaty and beefy. And this is three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Just a quick mix. So now we're just gonna add the steaks and I'm gonna flip them over to make sure they're coated on both sides. Okay. You'll notice I'm doing this in a 13 by nine baking dish instead of say a bowl or a bag. And that's because these guys tend to flop over on each other and then this inner bit here doesn't get marinated evenly. So I'm just gonna wrap this in plastic wrap and it'll marinate in the fridge for an hour. Halfway through, I'm gonna go and flip them over to make sure they're marinating evenly. Okay. Well, now we know that skirt steak is the perfect choice for grilling, and it all has to do with the physiology of the cow. Let's take a look. When a cow breathes in and out, both the inner and outer skirt steak come into play. Now, the outer skirt steak is actually the diaphragm, and the inside skirt steak is the transverse abdominis. When the cow breathes, the muscles expand to pull in the air and contract to push out air. When they expand, the muscles stretch and smooth out. And when they contract, the muscles pull together and form ridges. Those ridges on the skirt steak allow the marinade to come in contact with more meat. The more surface area the marinade has to cling to, the more flavor. So it's been an hour and I've removed the steaks from the marinade, but instead of throwing this out, we're gonna repurpose this. We're gonna turn this into a sauce. I'm going to add it to this small pot. We just need to make sure it's food safe. I'm just gonna bring this to a boil over high heat and we'll let it boil for 30 seconds and that's it. So it's been 30 seconds. I'm just gonna turn this off and we're gonna transfer this to a bowl. Now I wanna brighten these flavors just a little bit and I'm going to add one teaspoon of lime zest, half a teaspoon of orange zest, I've got two tablespoons of lime juice just to punch it up, mm. and then to bring everything together, one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. Okay, a little bit of a sauce, marinade, almost a vinaigrette. Yeah, <laughs> all of those things really, and that's it, all that's right. our sauce. Now, before we go outside, there are a couple of things we need to do to prepare the steaks. I'm gonna start by patting them dry. That's really important to get really great browning. If you leave moisture on the surface, it's just gonna make the steak steam. So one last thing to ensure great browning. I've got a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil and a teaspoon of baking soda. And we're just going to stir. I'm just gonna drizzle the mixture on and rub it into both sides of the steak. The oil is helping the meat to heat evenly and the baking soda changes the pH of the meat and helps it to brown faster. So I'm just gonna go wash my hands and then we'll go grill. Okay. So Bridget, I've had this grill preheating with all the burners on high for about 15 minutes okay. now and we're ready to get started. All right, good and hot. Yes, I'm gonna first clean the grill. Next, apply a little bit of oil and give those grates a quick wipe. I'm just gonna turn off this burner 
we don't really need all of these burners going okay. at this point, and that cool side will be useful later. Great, but the others are still on high. Yes, okay. we're going to leave the other burners on high and just get these steaks on there. It smells so good. <laughs> it as smells... soon as these steaks hit that grill, it's garlic and beef heaven. It smells yeah. fantastic. I'm going to let these cook until they're well browned on that first side. It's going to take two to four minutes. Okay. And I'm just going to check occasionally to make sure that they're browning evenly, move them around as necessary. All right. Wow. These guys are going to take two to four minutes on that second side okay. as well. And as they get close, I'm going to slide them over here to check the temperature. Then while I'm fiddling around and trying to figure out where the center is, they won't overcook. Good idea. Very thin steaks could overcook quickly. So to make sure I'm hitting the center, I'm not going to come straight down, but I'm going to come from the side. I'm looking for anything between 130 and 135 degrees. Okay. These look great. So these guys need to rest for about 10 minutes, and I'm just going to cover them with foil while they're doing that so they don't cool too much. And then what? And then we eat. So these guys have rested for 10 minutes. Oh, don't they beautiful. look great? They they're... smell awesome. And as with all steaks, we want to make sure we're cutting against the grain. Mm -hmm. So the grain runs kind of this way. Mm -hmm. And I take my knife and tilt it so it's at an angle and then slice. OK. Very super sharp knife, I see, yes. as well. And I'm making half inch thick slices. And slicing at an angle just presents a little bit more of that rosy interior. <laughs> Look at that. It's beautiful. So how many slices would you like? Yes. <laughs> Good answer. A few, please. I've got a little bit of that sauce, and it's pretty intense, so you won't need a ton on the steaks. Every bite of that skirt steak is tender and beefy and juicy. There's flavor inside, but that, oh, that mojo right. on the outside. It's buttery and silky, and there's so much grill flavor on there, too. It's definitely made for the grill, that super char. Taking it up to 130 degrees doesn't actually affect the rosiness, and it's actually more tender because we cooked it to a higher temperature. It's true. I think if it was more rare, it would feel a little bit stringier, but this is falling apart. I mean, I basically don't even need this knife. Mm -hmm. Lon, this is perfection. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Well, for skirt steak, that's perfect right off the grill. Cut longer steaks into smaller pieces, marinate in a mojo-inspired mix of garlic, orange and lime juice, and soy sauce, and then put in the fridge for an hour. Rub the steaks with a mix of oil and baking soda, and don't forget to simmer that marinade to create a rich sauce. Grill the steaks on high, rest, and then slice. So from our test kitchen to your kitchen, it's grilled mojo marinated skirt steaks. Oh look, what's over there? <laughs>